Welcome travelers to episode one of my ultimate New Zealand road trip. If you want the full brief, go watch episode zero, it's all in there. In episode one, I'm gonna be traveling to Hanner Springs on day one, and then day two, Kaikoura and Blenheim. This is where the adventure begins, right here, picking up my free rental van. So I've run into a little last minute change where it looks like they can't find my booking properly, but they're gonna give me the booking, so I'm gonna get the booking, but it's gonna not be the van that I was expecting. It sounds like I'm getting a van, but it'll be a little bit different to what I expected. Because this is what I expected. The little chubby rental van. This is the van I've got. Van needs a name. I'm thinking Dan. Dan the van. I like it. I mean, even for me, that's a lot of headroom. Full kitchen with fridge, with microwave. Oh, there's a lot of room over here too. Well, this begins the road trip then. Nothing else to say except for let's hit the road. Some authentic Kiwi lunch. Say no, I'm not like you. I'm that you get it. You go, go and get out and make you it. Ah, ah, ah. Someone like you should worry about. Maybe you too upside down. And I'm not like you. I don't think that you get it. Ah, ah, ah. I don't want to put on a smile. Everybody expects me to. So you can keep your suit and your tie. It got I do need your price so you don't need to impress the ones you hate that's so up Cause everything you own just ends up owning you So dear society you suck <laughs> Say no So we've now arrived in Hamner Springs and one of the main attractions of Hamner Springs of course is the hot pools. <sighs> Relaxing. Entry into the hot pools is $40 but if you use the book me voucher that I mentioned earlier you can get in for $29. You also get these little wristbands for $4 each to get a locker. They're waterproof. Just touch them to the RFID scanner and then you get a locker. These are good I think for about two hours or something and they only cost $4 so that's kind of handy to have and you don't have to worry about jangly keys and stuff in a pocket. Oh, it's a great place to come and just relax in the natural geothermal heated pools and... <sighs> relax. I'm not really into relaxing though. Luckily, there are other attractions here at the hot pools. There's the lazy river over there, the regular swimming pool, hydrotherapy pools, and the hydroslides. And there's a cafe over there. And if I'm honest, the only reason I'm here is because of the hydroslides. There's a lot of flashing lights in these slides, so a flashing light warning is now in effect. Another one for the collection. Well, that was good fun. 
That's not my van. So unfortunately, in my foolishness, I managed to get my microphone a little bit wet. Luckily though, I have a backup. This is usually my primary one. This is usually my backup one. You know, that's what it's there for. Oh, <laughs> jinx. Um, yeah. One added advantage of going to places like Hammer Springs is if you're traveling in a van, showers are scarce. Luckily, after your activity, they have shower facilities in there. And the facilities were nice and clean and well maintained. And they had soap and shampoo as a bonus. Mmm. Cafe slash restaurant has a lot of great foods to have, but I wasn't hungry, so I'm just gonna settle for a pie. Mmm. Great Kiwi classic is the pie. Whoa, that's hot. Oh. I still had just enough daylight left, just enough, to fit in one more thing before it gets too dark. And I'm gonna go on the forest amble or the sculpture walk. Let's go. When you take the forest amble, there's photographs of this little fella here the whole way along it to make sure that you're on the right path. Following the dog. It's not too long a walk which is good because at this time of year there's not a whole heap of daylight to play with. Decorated all the way along the length of the sculpture walk are all these really, really cool little wood carvings. I think we've got a squirrel or something in full climbing gear. I don't think it's a squirrel though. Squirrels are not very common in New Zealand, so that must be a possum or something. Peaceful. And if you're quiet enough, you can just. Your birds chirping. So many different kinds as well. New Zealand bird songs are just something else. Just a chorus of bird songs. Magnificent. So this one kind of looks like all of these mice are being eyed up by the falcon at the end. Some of the things like this just makes the walk a little bit more interesting than a regular walk, you know? That must have taken a lot of work. I, mean, I think that's my favorite one yet, actually. Looks like all of the individual hairs are made of like pine needles and things. It's just so intricate and cool looking. Sun's getting a bit low, it's getting kind of bright down that way. Hang on, if I do that, that you can kind of see, but I can't see. Oh, it's a gorgeous little wall, even without the carvings. Look at that. Just to give you a sense of scale of this thing. It's almost as tall as I am. Also, I think that might be an advantage of me being out at this time of year is that there's no sand flies and no mosquitoes. And those things go for me like crazy as well. So I'm probably doing a smarter thing coming out now rather than coming out in the middle of summer because I can imagine I would either have to smell heavily of bug spray or be covered head to toe in mosquito and sand fly bites. Neither of which I really want to do. And that's us back to the start again. And incidentally, back to civilization because I can hear people. It was a good little walk. 10 out of 10. Well, the lights seem to hold out for me while I finish that walk, but um, it is well and truly dark now, so I think it's probably about time that I try and find somewhere to stay for the night. Incidentally, I have an app on my phone called Campermate. Campermate is a free app, which is great for van life New Zealand because you can use it to find all kinds of locations and stuff. You can put in the details of what kind of van that you've got. If it's self-contained, non-self-contained, if you're looking for free campsites, if you're looking for paid campsites, they're all listed on here. If you're looking for washrooms, if you're looking for showers, if you're looking for service stations or dump stations, that sort of thing for the van, including attractions and local things to see and hikes. Not only that, but you can actually check ahead to see what other people are saying about the campsites. They're all reviewed by fellow travelers and then it even gives you an estimation of how much you're likely to pay at each one of the sites. I've only been using it for the last few hours, but it seems like it's gonna be really, really handy for this trip. First things first though, I'm gonna try and see if I can find a place that I can stay for the night. Well, that was incredibly lucky. I managed to secure one of only two freedom camping spots for the night. Okay, so they're, they're freedom camping, but they're allowed non-self-contained freedom camping. Make sure and check the rules for that. There's only two of them in the whole of Hamner Springs and everywhere that I've looked so far, it's always said that these two are really, really difficult to get. However, 
I seem to have managed to get one. Stroke of absolute luck because there's a hundred vans down the road, all at Hamner Hot Pools right now, all potentially looking for spaces to stay just like this one. Um, the reason that this one is allowed for freedom camping is because of that. The fact that there's garbage and washrooms. Ah, there we go. Needed a few things, got a few things. There doesn't really seem to be much else to do now except maybe go to bed. So I'm thinking tonight I'm gonna try to sleep on the top bunk and then if it's good, I'll stay up there. If it's not, then I'll convert back down to the bottom one. Now, I've gotta try and figure out how the heck to set this up. Now, uh, because this place actually sleeps like quite a few people instead of just me, I have four sleeping bags. Um, I only have three pillows, funnily enough. A lot of sheets and a lot of towels. And because I'm traveling solo, all of these are basically exclusively for my use. Oh no, camera's out of power. It's a downside to parking places where there's no power. I had to film all day. All my batteries are now low. And this one's about to run out. That one's already run out. And the 360's about to run out. Hopefully tomorrow when I'm driving again, I'll get a chance to plug everything in and get them charging. I'm sure this is gonna be graceful. It's not a massive amount of room, but it's, it's not. I wouldn't say that it wasn't uncomfortable. <sighs> Spent too long in bed and I've got two hours to get to Kaikoura. No time for breakfast. Right. I think that's us ready to go. So unfortunately, I rather foolishly slept in, which is weird because I woke up at like six o'clock this morning thinking oh, I should wait until it's light out. Sunrise turned out to be eight o'clock and I'm supposed to be in Kaikoura for my next adventure at 10 o'clock. It's a two hour drive. I do like Hammer Springs and the fact I have to like leave in such a rush is a bit of a shame. I guess that teaches me for sleeping in this morning. No breakfast, no coffee, and I've got to try and get out of here as fast as possible and get to Kaikoura. Farewell, Hamner. Until next time, onwards to our next adventure. Looks like I can't get on the 10 o'clock flight now anyway. Um, they're gonna put me on the 11 o'clock flight, which hopefully I can make it to on time. It's a little bit outside Kokura here at Pinnacle Rock, that big white landmass rock out there. That's where like a lot of seals and things like to come and hang out. Quite a lot of the seal watcher whale watch tours and come around that island because there's often quite a lot of things to see. So my whale watching tour is on hold at the moment. I'm still waiting to hear back from them what the plan is with that. But since I'm only about 12 minutes outside of Kaikoura and since I've got so much time to kill, I'm gonna see if I can see some seals. Oh, oh, there's a seal right there. I think I can see another one out in the water just swimming. There's actually a whole heap of seals on this rock just here I can see. You can see them, there's hundreds of them actually. The more you look, they're kind of camouflaged in the rocks because of their color, but there's, the more you look, the more you can see a whole heap of them. So sea life is one of the things that Kaikoura is known for. Seals, dolphins, whales, you name it. Although don't name any more than that because I honestly can't remember at the moment. But that's how close they are. And then here's the road. But like I say, respect their boundaries a little bit because I'm sure they could make a mess of you if they wanted to. So 
Kaikoura is known pretty famously for its whale watching and its marine life. Whether it's swimming with dolphins or swimming with seals or just going on tours where you get to see them from a boat or whale watching. Usually whenever I come to Kaikoura and do something touristy, it's usually a whale watch of some sort. This time I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm still going to do a whale watch, but I'm going to do a different kind of whale watch. Fantastic, that's probably the most fun I've ever had in Kaikoura. <laughs> there you go, and I get to do it every single day. Thanks, mate. Yeah, that's been Pleasure, fantastic. No, I'm glad you Appreciate enjoyed it. it. Yeah. That was amazing. Well, that genuinely was one of the coolest experiences I've ever had in an airplane. It's gonna be pretty difficult to top that, no? That was incredible fun. Huge thank you to Ben and the team at Air Kaikoura. I had so much fun. So I'm now on my way up into Kaikoura to go to Cooper's Catch, the fish and chip shop. And luckily, I'm making it there just on time to meet some VIPs. These vans are absolutely everywhere. The VIPs are actually my mum and dad who are on their way down to Christchurch. I know my dreams. Wow, it's changed in here. It's definitely changed in here since last time. That is one of my favourites, that is. Try to work out what VIP could stand for rather than very important. Very important parents. Um, well, parents, oh yeah, cool too. As at least three times we've seen you in the last six years now, eh? Mm. Bit of a habit, isn't it? We must do this more often. Oh. <laughs> Should I give him a wave? Treacherous roads, father. You don't want to go getting stuck on those roads at night, father. Not when you're high as a kite on all your cider, father. <laughs> Cheerio, yeah, don't yeah. do it and I wouldn't do. We'll try and be good. We can resume our video. I managed to procure my Kaikoura magnet. So, now I need to head a little bit further north and I'm planning to make it to Blenheim by the end of the day. So before I can leave Kaikoura, there's just one more stop I've got to make. Petrol prices here are 275 a litre. That is a little bit more than I was expecting. Whew. $117 for fuel. This might be a good time to tell you. One of the things about the Autobahn vans is that you get eight cents a liter off at mobile using this discount card that you get on your keys. Now, I'm not at mobile, but there isn't a mobile in Kaikoura apparently. So, <laughs> I was running dangerously low. And rather than topping up a little bit and then trying to add that little bit to whatever I fill up later, I just thought it'd be best just to fill it up just now. Either way, officially that is the very first tank of petrol I've put in any vehicle on this trip so far. Nelson, to Christchurch, to Hamner, to Kaikoura, and this is the first amount of petrol I've had to put in any vehicle so far. So 117 seems like a lot, and it is, 
but not when you consider that I've not spent any other money on fuel. Something I just discovered while having lunch with my parents was that I happened to have any cleaning supplies. So I just had to make a quick stop, grab some paper towels, some cleaning cloths, and some dish soap. I also, since it's a road trip, had to get a couple of Kiwi Classics as well. I got a V and an LMP. The other thing that I got while I was in Kaikoura was a reusable bag. It's also kind of a souvenir. I know, it's like in some weird souvenirs here. But I'm up to my Kaikoura magnet, and hopefully by the time I'm finished, I'm gonna have an entire refrigerator full of them. Let them next. Right, I'm hit the road again. To quote a classic New Zealand film, we ride north. Car. Well, good news. I managed to get a campsite for the night. That also means I get to have a shower tonight. Yeah. This'll do. Right by the river. Apparently just down here as well, there's freshwater eels. Whoa. There they go. They look super tame. Look at this one just sticking his face right up out of the water. I think I'm gonna head back into town now, see if I can get my fridge magnet, um, maybe get something to eat for dinner. And then yeah, I'll be back to set up the camp for the night. Yeah, looks like it's shut. Well and truly shut. Might be have a chance to come back in the morning though and see if it is open, because this does look like the kind of place that's gonna have it. Copeland's Bakery. $4 for a pie as opposed to like $8 or something like that from like some of the restaurants and cafes. So if you're after a pie, places like that's great. Copeland's Bakery, I got a chicken and veg pie and an apple pie for dessert. Both of them $4.60. So that's actually a lot cheaper than the vast majority of the pies that I've seen so far. Some of them are like $8. Who ate all the pies? Who ate all the pies? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Quite a weird aspect of seeing places in, in the dark. I don't think I've ever been in Blenheim at night before. Uh, this is the place I was looking for. Fingers crossed, eh? I have some, but um, the shiny edition ones, not the regular ones, so they will fit in with the rest of the collection, and they don't have a Blenheim one. Is a tad bit disappointing. Anyway, my hunt for a magnet has been unsuccessful, so now I'm heading back to the campsite and then figure out what it is that I'm gonna do for tomorrow. charging. Great success. Great success. The many advantages of being on a powered site, I now have warmth as well. So I can actually have the heating on. And that's the end of episode one of my great New Zealand road trip. In the next episode, I'm going to be heading up to Picton, across the Cook Strait to Wellington, and then on to the rest of the North Island. I'm going to be heading up New Plymouth, Taupo, Rotorua, and then Auckland. And then I'm out of here. I will keep on adding that running total so that you can keep an eye on how much I'm actually spending on everything. Every single cost will be accounted for in this video. If you haven't seen episode zero yet, what are you waiting for? Go watch it. For now though, all relevant links are in the bottom. Anyway, good night all.